Yeah, not gonna happen. Okay, let's bottle some mead. Hello and welcome back. My name is Nordic Hammer J, and it has been about a year since I made these meads. So, let's bottle them. Shouldn't be that difficult, right? Well, yes and no. So, before you just assume all you need is you need a siphon to take out of your carboy to put in some wine bottles, you're not completely wrong, but you also should do some other steps just to make sure that your mead experience is a little bit more enjoyable, I guess. Like, first off, you should try it. You should try sampling your mead before you bottle it and save it for later because you might not like it or you might not like how it tastes because, you know, things don't work as planned all the time. So for this example, my cranberry mead that I made came up pretty good. The flavor is pretty good and the flavor is definitely there, but it is super dry. I mean, it will make your face pucker super dry. So if you like dry mead, that's fine. Go ahead and skip the stage. But if you want to make your mead a little bit sweeter, you can back sweeten it. And I'll show you how to do that too. So first off, try your mead. Make sure that you like the taste of it. Make sure you like the sweetness or the dryness of it. When you have that taken care of, there are some other things you need to do. So first off, you want to make sure that any of that leftover yeast that you have on the bottom, or I believe it's called lest, I think? Lest, maybe? I'm going to call it sediment that's on the bottom of your mead is taken care of because when you're mixing it or uh, transferring it or adding your other chemicals that you need to make sure your mead stabilize that it might interfere and re-agitate and you have your mead be murky again. So to make sure that your yeast leftover sediment is taken care of you'll be adding some chemicals I guess, preservatives. First off as you should for anything that you're working with, uh, all the mead components or the uh, tools and instruments that you'll be using, you want to make sure that they're sanitized. So once again, we'll be using the Star Sand Cleaner because you want everything to be clean. You don't want bacteria inside your mead because that will not make a tasty mead. So first off, you want to be adding your Campton tablet. You want to be adding a Campton tablet to your carboy while you still have your mead in there just because you want it to be sanitized. And then to make sure that your yeast is taken care of, if you're going to back sweeten it, you want to put in your potassium sorbate. And why you're putting potassium sorbate in there is because, again, if you are back sweetening your mead, you're essentially adding sugar to your must. And when you have yeast that's still active in your must, you're going to have your sugar introduced, and that yeast is going to convert that sugar into fermentation liquid and you're going to make pressure and CO2, hence why you have your airlocks. So if you don't take care of that leftover yeast, if you add more sugar to back sweeten it, you potentially have the chance of your bottles exploding or at the very least having the corks pop off and you're going to have a mess, a pretty big mess. So again, potassium sorbate and Camden tablets are a must if you want to add to your must, especially if you're going to back sweeten it. Uh, as far as how much, you're going to be adding half a teaspoon per gallon Adjust it accordingly if you're going to do a three gallon or five gallon or however much you're doing. But half a teaspoon of your potassium sorbate per gallon, and then one Campton tablet per gallon as well. Again, just want to make sure that everything's nice and clean. So when you have that inside your carboy, mix it all together to make sure that you have it all throughout. But when you do that, you might have some of your sediment come back up into your liquid because you're mixing the entire thing together. To take care of that, you want to add some Biofine Clear to get your mead back to a nice clear stage. Now this uh, specific type of clarifier is a little bit confusing to understand, but you're going to be adding anywhere from a quarter tablespoon to two tablespoons up to five gallons. So pretty much for one gallon, you'll want to use about a quarter to maybe a half of uh, a tablespoon of your biofine just to make sure that it becomes clear again. Now if you have issues besides adding the biofine, kind of like my blueberry meat I have over here, you want to add something called pectic enzyme to your meat to help clarify it. Now again, you don't really have to get rid of your uh, to clear 
clean up and make clear your mead if you don't want to. It just visually looks better. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the blueberry mead right now. You can still drink it and there's nothing that's going to affect it. The cloudiness per se isn't going to affect your taste. It's just going to make it look more like a apple cider than a typical clear mead. So uh, I'm pretty sure that the blueberry one did it because blueberry is high with pectic enzymes or uh, pectin already. So it's kind of left over. It looks good. And the biofine that I added to the blueberry did help. You can kind of see on the top of it that it's a little bit on the clearer side on the top and it's kind of like a fluffy kind of murkiness in the middle. Then you have your sediment on the bottom. So the pectin enzyme is going to help with that. And for this, you're going to be wanting to use two tablespoons, I believe, a teaspoon, might be a teaspoon per gallon. I'll have the actual amount up there. But with all that taken care of, you want to make sure everything's nice and cool and settles back down. And then from there, we can go to transfer your mead to another container so we can add uh, sugars to it to make it sweeten. So let's get that taken care of and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that we have it all once again cleaned out, we're going to transfer my cranberry mead to a, I just have a three gallon uh, glass carboy, just I don't have anything else that would be sanitary and clean for the transfer, but this will work. So we're going to take a siphon with some tubing from one carboy to the next, and you want to really have probably a second person help you do this, just because it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do. I don't need the topper anymore, so on the table is perfectly fine. So you're going to have to put this in your mead. Try not to go all the way to the bottom, just because you want to try to ignore that sediment as much as you can. And hopefully this doesn't come out. So you're going to pull this to the top and pump it in. It would help if I had the uh, three gallon carboy lower than the one gallon that currently has the cranberry in it. But just to show you, this could work too for your method. I think it's going down. First time doing a good job. I think. Okay, so now that I have most of the mead in this container, there's still gonna be a little bit left over, but I'm not gonna be able to get this with the siphon per se. I'll just use a little like turkey baster. We can move on to the next step. So now that you have your mead out of your initial carboy and into your three gallon uh, back sweetening sampling carboy, I guess we're gonna call it, we can now add our sugar to pack sweeten the mead. Now, normally with a honey mead like mead, you're gonna be using honey to back sweeten it. Well, because I wasn't prepared and I used all my mead to make my initial batches of mead, not thinking I would have to back sweeten it, I don't have any mead. And right now mead is really expensive. So instead I'll be using sugar. Now, People interchange sugar with honey for a lot of different recipes, not just for mead making. So from a taste point of view, it's still going to be just fine for what we're doing with it. But just want to give you the disclaimer that this is not going to be 100% like official authentic mead. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure back then in the ye olde Scandinavian days, they didn't have camping tablets either. So we're going to make it work. Now, I don't exactly have a full gallon of mead because we lost some due to the sediment and... I tried some during the holidays that we had just to see how I liked it. So it's going to be about three quarter of a gallon, give or take. And I have no idea how much to add for sugar or honey, but I'm going to start out with say half a cup because you know, we can always either add some more if it's not sweet enough, but hopefully a half a cup is not going to be too sweet. But if it is, it's mead, it's honey mead, it's honey wine, it's going to be sweet anyway. So let's add half of a cup of sugar. Well, that's kind of cool. I'm going to add that sugar in. 
to get it all out of the funnel. And then from there, we're going to use a fancy handy dandy, come on you, mixing paddle on our drill. Ooh, that was fast. I'm gonna put that in a low gear, I forgot. Put that into our uh, carboy, mix it all together, and we're gonna sample it after that. Now before you do that, uh, check your mixing paddle for uh, specific specifications. But for this one specifically, it's told, uh, I'm told not to use it more than 10 seconds, 20 seconds I believe, for whatever reason. Mostly probably for the air gas figure of it. But just follow the package, make sure you don't get too close, and make sure you follow which way on the drill it's supposed to work. So let's get this together, blend it up, and we're gonna try it in a little bit. See you in a second. Okay, so now that we have that all mixed together, uh, don't do what I did and go a little bit faster. That's why it's all foamy and frothy, because I got a lot of air in there, but it'll settle down. It's okay. I'm not going to be too picky about it. I also added a little bit more sugar, because I did try it a little bit, and we're close. We're really close, but I want it to be a little bit sweeter. So this is about three-quarter of a cup per about three-quarter of my gallon. So now we're going to siphon some of this out. Just get a little bit. Again, might be a little bit easier if you have a buddy. Perfect. Good. Should be a good amount. We're going to just kind of put that back in here for a second. Put that over to the side. And the color is good. Don't know if you can see that. Color is nice and clear, but good color, good taste, and let's try it. So, skull, hopefully. I think that's a pretty good guess for uh, not really knowing what I'm doing. So that's a good flavor. It still has some of the like tartness from the cranberry, but it definitely has a sweetness to it that meat is supposed to be, or at least I think it is. So I think that's a pretty good blend. Yeah, I think that's a really good blend. So unofficially, Hammer Dre is gonna say three quarters of a gallon of the mead, I use three quarters of a cup of sugar. So now that we know that this works out really well, we're gonna bottle the mead and transfer it over to our wine bottles. Uh, you're going to lose some, of course, because of everything that you lost because of the sediment and all that stuff. But ideally, out of a one gallon carboy, you should get about five 750 mill millimeter, milliliter, not meter, milliliter uh, wine bottles on them. So for one carboy, you're going to have about five of these bottles. So let's get that all set up and let's get them bottled. Okay. So there wasn't exactly three quarters of a gallon in there, and I kind of expected that to be honest, because again, the sediment in the bottom and the fact that we did drink a little bit, a little bit of it during the holiday, kind of expected, just a rough guess. But still, three and a half bottles of pretty much mead, not a bad return. So I would say that's kind of a win. Now that's pretty much it for how to bottle your own mead. Not that bad. There's some steps, but still it could be a lot worse. So remember, when you do want to bottle your mead, you want to first use Star Sand Cleaner to make sure anything that's going to come in contact with your mead to be nice and clean, because you know, bacteria is bad. Then you want to make sure you add a Campton tablet into your carboy to make sure that no bacteria could, could possibly grow in your mead, because again, bacteria is bad. And then especially if you want to back sweeten it, you want to throw in some potassium sorbate so the yeast inside your mead doesn't reactivate, uh, eat the sugar that you're adding to it, and you have like a small little glass volcano because that's a mess and that's bad. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you do need to have to like clear up your mead because you're going to add a lot of stuff to it and you're going to stir up the sediment on the bottom, uh, you can add the Biofine Clear or and or pectic enzymes if you're going to have a little bit more of a fruity mead, kind of like my blueberry mead. You don't have to do that. There's nothing, again, there's nothing wrong with drinking a like cloudy looking mead. 
it just looks better if it's clear because a clear mead is a nice looking mead but again no judgment if you want to just have go straight from that to a bottle it looks pretty good it's still going to taste good and i don't think anyone's going to complain when you give them a free drink of mead so yeah that's pretty much it this video is pretty much done uh if you like this video give me a little thumbs up down below if you want to see more videos in the future hit that subscribe button uh, I definitely will be making more mead in the future. Uh, if you want to see that one, I could redo it. I've definitely learned quite a bit from this little experiment, I guess you can call it, of a hobby. So I learned what I should do and what I could do better for next time. So if you want me to remake the How to Make Meads, let me know. Throw that in the comment down below, because I definitely know a lot more than I did a year ago when I started doing all this stuff. Uh, for the next batch, I'll probably be doing the same uh, honey mead, blueberry mead, cranberry mead. And then I also have the thoughts for making a apple mead. And then maybe like a wild berry blend or maybe strawberry. Not quite sure on that last one. But either way, they're all going to be pretty tasty. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comments below. If you have a different flavor that you would recommend for that last batch, mead batch, let me know that too. But either way... Thank you for watching. Thank you for all of your uh, support. And until next time, I'll see you then. Bye.